What's up YouTube, Jeremiah Hersey here from Pragmatic Works. And this is the first episode of a six part series that I'm doing on virtual tables. So in this episode, I'm gonna be focusing in on the values function. What the values function does is if a column is referenced, it's going to return a column with distinct values with inside of it, including any blank rows that might be in there. And if a table is referenced with the value function, it's going to return an entire table with all the columns inside of it. If you want to follow along, there is a link down below where you can download the PBIX file to follow along. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are inside of our file and we're going to start in the data view over here on the left hand side. And what we're going to select at the top, is the new table option. Once again, the values function is a table expression. So as I use the values function here, so if I type in values and let's return the month here. Okay, so date table, we're gonna call out to our month column. So what this is going to do is it's going to return a single column table with a list of all of our values for month. We can see here, January through December. If we return a different column here, maybe we go from our sales territory region. If we return the sales territory region, what we're gonna see is that it returns all the distinct values, including any blanks. So notice the blank value down here at the bottom. So with the values function, it does return blank values as well. If we call out to an entire table, so if I call out to my sales table here, this is going to return the entire sales table. So if you reference a column, it's going to give you a one column table with a distinct list of values. If you call out to a table, it's going to return the entire table with all of the columns associated to it. Okay, so once again, let's say maybe I call out to the year column now with inside the date table. Once again, if you reference a column, it's going to give you a one column table with a distinct list of values. Notice here we have 2005 through 2010. Okay, so that's what the values function does. So let's take a look at our report view to see what kind of problem we can solve using the values function. So here with inside of our model, we can see that we have this attempt for three month average sales, which is supposed to be a rolling sales total here. And so what we want to do is whatever month we're at. So if we're looking at the month of September, we want to go back three months and get the average for those three months. And we want this to be a rolling total. So as it goes into the next month, so as it goes into October, it's going to drop off the previous month. Okay. So this would run October, September, and August. It would drop off July. So as we look at the measure that was used to create this, so take the average sales amount here for dates in period. So dates in period allows us to go back in time. So what this is saying is, whatever the last date is in the current filter context. So if I'm at September here, this would be the last date in September. We need to go back three months and then we're going to take the average sales amount. Now we can see that the values here are incorrect. So something is going on with the engine, the data modeling engine, as we're trying to process this measure. So it's not returning what the values that we expect. So if we think about what we need to create here, so we need a list of all of our months. So January, February, March, so on and so forth, all the way down. Then we need to take the total sales amount for each month 
Okay, so we need to have a table with another column here that has our total sales for each month. And then from there, we need to look at just the previous month from the current filter context. And then we need to go back three months. Well, in order to do this, we can use the values function to return a single column table with a list of all of our values. So instead of using the average function, we're going to be using the average X function because it uses a table expression. So we're going to go ahead and create a new measure here. And this measure, we're going to call this uh, three month average sales rolling, but this is going to be with our values function. Now, the values function cannot be used in a variable. So this is one limitation that we have to the values function is that it cannot be used inside a variable. So I'm going to show you what happens if you try to, to use this values function inside of a variable. It's not going to return the correct result as you expect it to. Okay, so we're going to call out to a variable here and our variable first one that we're going to create is going to be called the start day. So where do we want to start to take this average? Well, that's going to be wherever we're at in the current filter context. So if we're here at October, we want to make sure we're at the last day of October. So we're going to use our last date function here to find the last date within the current filter context. Then we're going to create a variable for our virtual table. So I'm going to call this table VAL for values. Now, once again, I'm letting you know that this is not going to work properly because the values function cannot be used in a variable. So we're going to try here to return this. So we're going to call out to our date table month column here. That's going to give us a distinct list of values from our month. All right, so now we have this single column table with our list of months in it. So we know that we're going to be modifying the filter context. We're going to go back in time from wherever we're at. So we're going to have to use a calculate function here to go back in time. So the expression that we're going to use here is going to be the average X function because X functions iterate over a table expression. The table that we're going to use in this case is we're going to attempt to use our variable for our table of values. Now the expression that we want to use is the total sales measure. So we want to create a single column table with all of our months and then find the total sales for each of those months, then take the average after we go back in time. So we're going to call out to our total sales measure here. We're going to add a comma and now we're going to add the filter that we want to apply. Well, we're still going to be using dates in period. So dates in period allows us to go back in time. So it's going to ask us where our dates are located. Always the date table date column. What is our start date going to be? That's going to be our start day variable. Okay. So wherever we're at in the current filter context, we want to go back three months. So that's the number of intervals here. So we're going to go minus three and the interval is going to be month. All right. So what we're saying here is create a table with months and total sales in it. Then take the average after you go back in time three months of total sales. Now what we'll see here is that as we try to return this measure, it's not going to give us the values that we expect to see. So if I add this into my visual here, what you'll notice is it just gives us the total sales amount for each row here. Okay. It just gives us total sales. This is because the values function cannot be used inside of a variable. It does not work. So what we want to do is we actually want to use this function 
with inside of our measure. So we're gonna replace that variable here and just type out the values function. And we'll see when we do that, it's going to work correctly. So I'm gonna remove my variable. I'm gonna call out to my values function, to the date table, the month column. Okay, so once I replace that variable with the values function and I click return, what we're gonna see is our measure now starts to work correctly. For the first month, it's 473. Then it, as it averages these two months, as it moves to August, it goes up to 489. As it moves to September here, it's dropping a little bit below 506. So we expect our value, our average to go down. We can see it here at 484. So the values function allows us to return a single column with a distinct list of values with inside of it. And you can see in this example that we're able to pull back the proper value by using that virtual table. So I want to thank you for joining me. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. Once again, this is just the first part of a six part series. We're going to continue talking about virtual tables and how to use them. And then we'll eventually get to data lineage as we get to episode four. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.